Tell me what do you do when you don't know you can. Seems like it's never enough. What do you say when your friends turn away and you
into us. And we want to say thank you. You washed over our homes, we want to say thank you. Our children at school, you protected them, oh God. You have been there. And we want to say thank you today. And I want to thank you for the healing that's taking place. I want to thank you for moving in this place. I want to thank you, oh God, for saving our children. I want to thank you for turning the husbands around and turning wives around and, and making homes better than what they were. I want to thank you for comforting those who are going through bereavement, those who have faced sickness, oh God. We just want to say thank you to them. And as we continue to worship you, we give you all of the honor, all of the praise. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Burn. Mm -hmm. 
and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vaunted not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, holdeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we now, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. But now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abide in faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. May the Lord have a blessing to the ears and rules of his word. Amen. 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 Oh, I just want 
Peace and blessings and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It is good to be in the house of the saints. Amen. And, you know, each and every one of you are special to God. He clothes the lily of the valley. He looked after every sparrow. And if you know if that's his concern, what would be his concern for you? He loved you with something that I cannot express in any way, in any words. It's an undying love. So now let us lift our hearts and, and kneel for as possible and solicit this God who loves us. O oh, compassionate and loving Father, we come to you, Lord, because you are our creator, O oh, Lord. The God who created, you are the one who sustained us, and you came to reclaim us. So Lord, we are just so grateful for all your benefits and all your goodness, because all good things come from you. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals body, mind, and spirit. And Lord, we are in need of your healing. So we come before your seat of mercy, Lord. You are the king, the victorious king that sits on the right hand of the Father. Yes. You are the Lamb of God who shed his blood to save his people. Lord, you weren't happy in heaven without us being there. So we come before your throne and ask forgiveness for our sins, iniquities, and transgressions, and forgive those, Lord, who have sinned against us. Let your blood clean us. Give us your grace, not only to forgive us, but to empower us to live above sin. Help us fight a good fight, Lord, and be faithful on this journey that we are trying. Yes. Lord, we have many mothers in the house today, and I'd like to also salute them, Lord, because especially uh, African-American mothers, there's so much that they are confronted with, Lord, racism, many other challenges, but I'd like to admire you for blessing them with strength to endure and stand in the time of need. Lord, you are standing with them and you won't forsake them and you won't leave them and you won't leave us. Now let your spirit come down among us. You know particularly what our needs are, Lord. Yeah. Each and every one, each and every family, we ask your special blessing now, point of your spirit to be upon them. But Lord, our hearts are also heavy for the children, our children, Lord. That you would bless them, that you would protect them, that you would give them strength, give them understanding, that they may make the right decisions to build their character and their faith. We ask you to bless our leaders in a very special way, and we ask you to bless the man serving their great, great life this day. In the name of Yahshua, Jesus, let the congregation say, Amen. The 
Lauren wants to give we have a, another very special music for Dr. Robinson Smith uh, speaks to us today. Her daughter Shane Smith will be singing with us at this time. Amen. Thank you. 
but not in the lake, but not in the fall. But Lord, let it be from you. Speak, dear Jesus. Speak to your servants. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I came to serve the Lord. I came to have church today. We had some difficulties this week. <laughs> As the enemy, the, the adversary, tried to do everything he could to keep me from being here. And when I say everything, I ended up in the uh, urgent care, where I went from a sore throat to bronchitis. So y'all be with me now. The saints been praying for me this week. Christian sensibilities. 
And in doing so, I want to not take, take claim for any of the music, the words that I've been using, but I think it is necessary for me to explain what I mean by the battle of love. Amazingly, today we've heard a lot about love already. And as I say so many times when I stand before you, I know that I'm on the right course when I hear it in South School, when I hear it in song, when I hear people saying those words that that's reinforcement that God wants me to talk about this love. You know, because love, without love, who are you? In the 80s, and I didn't know that one thing, I just want to say this before, because we heard an adequate reading of the scripture this morning. Adequate they done. In chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Everybody done. And I thank you uh, for that reading, bro. Um, during the early 80s, and if you grew up during that time, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know there were many love songs that were written. It was all about the love. You know, they on the Vietnam War, People needed reassurance during that time. They were sending their boys and young men and even some young women into a war. Into a war that they didn't know whether or not they were going to return from. And so during that time, all kinds of songs, all kinds of renditions, even poetry and, and, and different kinds of writings all pointed to a certain type of love. One of the songs that lends itself to my topic this morning was, was recorded by Pat Benatar. You remember Pat Benatar? And during that time, guess what? A lot of the music that we heard and that we sung wasn't, it wasn't, we didn't care what race they were. Whether they were the carpenters, Pat Benatar, it was about love. Men in Riverton. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But y'all know what I'm talking about. But Pat Benatar's song says, we are young. Heart to heart, we stand. No, we, we stand. No promises, no demands. What love is about to We are strong. No one can tell us we're wrong. Searching our hearts for so long. Both of us know love is about to I began to think about that <clears throat> and what she was saying. And if you read throughout the, the lyrics of that song, you, you, you begin to understand the confusion in it. You begin to understand that that particular love is not really illustrated in Corinthians chapter 13. There are some opposites there. Okay? But, it, but yet and still, it also describes the pain that they were going through as young lovers. It describes the heartache that there were no promises, no demands, and meaning that when you don't have any demands in each other, you do your own thing. Okay? There was a contrast. But the one thing that they did know <coughs> is that love is a battlefield. Now, this particular battle that we know 
It didn't start here on earth. This, this battle, this battle started in heaven. In Revelation chapter 12, starting with verse 7, it says, Then there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon, dragon lost that battle. And he and his angels were forced out of heaven. <clears throat> this great dragon, dragon, the ancient servant called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. We now know that the planet field is what? Earth. And the tools that he, and the strategies that he used against God's people are many. But the great price is love. There's a battle being raged for love. How do I know? How do we know? Because everything that we know that is love is God. God is love. And the love that we see being characterized each and every day is a different kind of love. In, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the entire, the entire chapter gives us an illustration of the character of God. Love is about the character of God. And there are two characters in this, this battle. There's God and that's Satan. He wanted to be God. You know what? Amen. And in doing so, he has done everything he can to steal. Now, some of you may take issue with me in this. Mm. But we have so many scriptures to support this. But the main thing that we want to be clear of is that there is a, an example of perfect love. There is an example of of love. And that love is winning. But Satan wants you to think it's not. The people in that song thought that love was so difficult. That they were fighting a battle on their own. But that's not true. That's not true. There are different types of love. And because I, I want to get to some strategy here, what I want you to know is Satan does not care about the other ones because it's easy for him to destroy families. It's easy for him to destroy friendships. Isn't that right? So the only love that he really wants to destroy is that the love that God has for us. The love that that's the, uh, uh, cannot be described. I, I, I want to stop this table uh, because I was when I was preparing for uh, this. I wanted to look at the definition. You know, what, what, what's the definition of some of love now? And I should not have been, but I was amazed that the dictionary said that it was constantly changing. The love changes. And this time next year or five years from now, it might be the same definition. But we know <laughs> that the love of God never changes. He's the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Evermore. So we can't depend upon the world's love. Find love for us. But that's what they do. I hear you pray. 
praying for our young people. And you know what? I'm just going to have to kind of put this aside and, 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 and teach what I know to teach. Amen. Amen. Uh, and when I get up here, you might have one thing, Pastor. The Holy Spirit can tell you something totally different. You're praying for our children. So I'm going to give you an illustration. I'm going to give you a story. Y'all better keep me back with me just a little while. Amen. Because you know what? That's the definition of love. Love is patient. Be patient with me. There's a story told of a couple who loved their children. They, they dearly wanted the best for them. The priest came to see him and said, we really need your children to come and partake of this activity, this praise that we're going to have. These parents felt like, hey, we in the game now. We're going to take my children, my son, and he's going to become great because of this. They took the son, they took the son. They left him with the priest. And they sat with the other parents. And every now and then they would see parents coming and crying. But they would say, oh, they crying. As they sat there, they would entertain loud drums and all kind of music was played for them. And they thought, we are in the game. After a while, the priest came. They jumped to their feet. And he told them, Martin is selling. Children are being thrown in the fire every day by parents, by people who love them. You see, Martin is the God that they have sacrificed their child to. And some of y'all are sitting around here thinking, this was back in the Bible time. They still do it. They still sacrifice it to Martin, to she monster. Throwing them in the fire. You wonder how then are my children being thrown in the fire? You let them go places they don't have any in school. You let them do things that they don't have any in school. And let me tell you one of the biggest problems, and, and I'm not going to put it all on parents because the church has this. Remember, it was the church who threw them in the fire. It was the church who threw these kids in the fire. In the name of a religion. Let me tell you. Some, sometimes people throw their children in the fire because they want a check. They want them to pretend that they don't have the faculties that they should have. They let them act any kind of way at school, and instead of going there to reason with the teacher, they want to pick a fight. So therefore, the children are going to school, what? Jumping on the floor. Yeah. Teachers can't teach because children are doing all kinds of things. That's throwing our children in the fire.
and comments made are in the cute. It is not cute when you throw your child in the fire and you smell them burning. Because you know what? In the end, the wages of sin is there. The messages that are being told in these songs and these uh, rap songs and all these things have nothing to do with the love of God that we know. They get into your head and they cause our children to forget who they are, to forget everything. They don't know how to reason. They don't know how to resolve issues without fighting. Because it starts in here. The battle that's being raged starts in here, in the mind. See, if, he can, if the devil can change your chemistry up there, he can tell you anything. You will start to do anything. You have nothing to stop you from doing those things that are wrong. People who, they said that those folks who uh, participate in pornography, and, and I'm just not going to even, that the, the, the word now encompasses so much. Because you know what? Everybody that, when you get on TV, when you get online, is pornography. You're being bombarded with these images. And it, the, 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 the research says that the more that you're watching, it's worse than being hit in an accident on a you know, car accident and hit in, in an own head on collision. That's what's going on in the head, in our children's head. To teach my kid, my young kid, my, my grandkid is what this means. Yeah, and uh, Elder Green may have to help me. I teach him about Amy and Daddy. The Madeline. Because when you get to those two little things in the brain, there's nothing that's stopping you from doing all manner of things. So whatever that we read here, in 1 Corinthians is the opposite. They have no more patience. Isn't that right? They behave unseemly. And we're not talking about children. But it doesn't mean just them. We're talking about us too. Let, let, let me tell you another story. Because I'm, I'm, I'm off straight here, so I need you to listen to them. When I was five, six years, my dad left my mom. And she was devastated. Devastated. But that's when all the Bible studies that my aunt and uncle had been doing came into play. And so she and I were baptized here. But see, my mom was a she was a, she was a, a, a single mother then. And my dad was gone. Yeah, I'm talking about that brother. <laughs> he was gone. And so she had to go to work. And I had to become, in essence, at six years old, a parenting of my younger siblings. She would leave home early in the morning before it was even daybreak. Come home late at night. At seven years old, the pressure got to me. I had a nervous breakdown at seven years old. But one thing I did find that I did was God myself. But the devil knew it too. And so we began to listen to different, the music, I began to listen to Adam. So Al Green began to shake 
what I knew about me and the Lord. Y'all know that bring me. Y'all, I know when I say that some of these songs came back to you. <laughs> Didn't it? See, because if I say Marvin Gaye, some come back to you. And that right? Mercy, mercy me. Help on. That's what you said. Now I get past it. That's right. Oh, mercy, mercy me. What? Things ain't like they used to be. Oh. <laughs> but, but you know, everything, even I would listen to these songs because especially I have read because it seems like you're just speaking to me. He knew my troubles. It, it was a two-hour ride to come to church. So we didn't make it that often. We had to catch the bus to come. All right? So there I bring start teaching. All about it. Marvin Gaye, even with his social outreach and about the injustice that was going on. Saved you. Why then, son? You want to know to stop the kind of love that Adam Green's giving me? Marvin Gaye, I saw my dad in me. And it just made me reach out to him even more. See, we're talking about the battle for love here. So why you out there doing your thing, the devil doing his thing? Why you out there worried about that man who ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing for you and he ain't even your husband? The devil doing what he can with your children. If we don't help the children, guess who helps them? The devil ain't gonna leave no slave. So he can keep him. So Al Green began to tell me some stuff about loves. But everything that he told me didn't involve marriage. The last song on his list was about marriage. It was too late for me. It was too late. Because see, I had already been, my brain had already been shaped the wrong way. My brain had already been looking for love in all the wrong places. My brain had told me that it was all right. <laughs> because that thing says, how did you stop? And what makes the world go around to that place of God? Please help me, me, my broken heart, and let me live again. They didn't stop that me. They went all something. They went all just sad. Some love and happiness. Y'all remember that? Love will make you. Now every child, and I want y'all to pay attention to the children, 
Because our children, every day I get up, some child will kill some of the child. Or some child will be killed. And while we worry about our own problems, the devil is wreaking havoc in our families. He's wreaking havoc with our children. And all this stuff that I went through, I'm a living witness of how the devil can use a bright mind and destroy it and destroy life. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter if you come from a good home, actually. Because what he's doing out there, and if you're not paying attention, he has your child doing some stuff that ain't got no business doing it. And it's going to ruin that life. One thing I, I know about Sister Olivia, she always got her children in church. Amen. I don't care if nobody else knows, she here. Amen. I don't care if nobody else says, she's here. She got her children in church. And I'm going to tell you, the scripture says that we may depart from our train, but when we get old, we're going to come back to it. And that's what happened to me. I departed from my train, but when I go old because of the teaching that I had, I came back. So love may be a battlefield. It may be a battlefield. And you know what? There's one song I'm going to leave you with. That word of the song. I skipped it my jump because we all came. <laughs> and that one that says, What love got to do with it? What love except a second hand emotion? That's not true. That's a lot straight from here. But it didn't stop us from dancing to it and not even paying attention with that song. What love? got to do with it. Everything. Amen. Love got everything to do with it. It was love in the garden that him, the first animal and wrapped the first man and woman up. That was love. It was love that brought the Hebrew children out of Egypt. And they crossed over into the dry land. That was love. That was love that they followed as a pillar of fire at night that warmed them and a cloud by day. That was love. It was love that fed them manna even though they grew. That was love. It was love. When that hit, when Moses hit that rock and water spewed out, that was love. Amen. Love created himself as a baby Amen. and came through a virgin. That was love. That was love that laid, that left heaven, a glory of heaven, that come and abide and lay in a manger. With the animals, that was love. What love got to do with it? Everything. Amen. But God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's love. What love got to do with it? Everything. It's love that carried Him to Calvary. It was love when He was hanging on the when he hung between two thieves, when he hung his head and died, that's love. What's love got to do with it? Everything. It's love when he said, it is finished. That's love. Amen. It was love when he didn't lay in that, so that's that tomb. And never got to do it. But on the third day, he rose up. On the third day, he defeated death. That's love. So what does love have to do with it? Everything. But I got, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you another story because it just happened. My oldest son, in our family devotion, was telling the story of my two grandsons at, at 
He had told them not to do so. But when they thought he was alone and one paying any attention, they would they, 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 they sneak outside. They would throw on rocks at each other. Now that that made a simple. They were throwing rocks at each other. And he had told them to throw down those rocks. So they sneaked it. One threw the rock. The oldest one threw a rock in it. Younger was one. Got hit. And he began to leave. Not knowing that my son, thinking that my son was still there and not paying attention, they, they sneaked upstairs trying to stop the bleeding. But the bleeding was so profuse that my son, my, my oldest girl son, could not stop. So he had to go to the father. He went to his father and he said, Dad, I know you told us not to do this. But Dad, we got to help Tyler because Tyler is going to bleed to death. So my son went to us. He, he came running and he had to stop it. You see, we are bleeding to death. And the only one who can stop the bleeding is no other name must, must we be saved except by the name of Jesus. See, my, my son, my, my grandson knew that he couldn't do nothing about it. But he knew somebody that could do something about it. We don't know. I don't know. But I know somebody. I know somebody. In this battle for love is all the pain the price is already been paid. In this battle for love, Jesus paid it all. In this battle for love, I learned my song was no longer about the elderly. My song was no longer about mocking me. My song was about Jesus because love lifted me. Love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, but love lifted me. Martha to a sing. This ended something for me. I got off strip, but the Holy Spirit got off strip. Amen. Somebody needs to know, no matter what you've done, how far you've gone, I don't care what it is, you can bring it to Jesus and you can keep it in your Amen. I will give him a 
Thank you. 